Please welcome to the stage, Director Alexander Payne. Thanks a lot, thanks yes. a lot. I know how you're all feeling right now. Uh, when my programming team and I first saw the film, we all uh, felt like there was a, a warm glow that sort of entered the screening space we were in. And I really genuinely feel we all left with a little bit more joy and a restored sense of humanity in our hearts. So thank you for this beautiful film. And thanks for the awesome reception. <laughs> thanks for being a great audience ask Alexander a few questions and hopefully we might have uh, time for a few audience questions as well. I want to first ask you a question about the story. Uh, you've already won two adapted Best Screenplay Academy Awards for Election and Sideways. Uh, Descendants and Sideways. Oh, Descendants and Sideways. Uh, Election, one of my favorite films. Um, can you talk a little bit about working with David Hemmingson on this script? And do you have a particular approach working with your writers? This was uh, new, for, in my experience, and unique. So I had had the idea for this film for about 10 years and hadn't gotten around to it, uh, nor did I have that life experience. I hadn't gone to an Eastern prep school. I thought, we'll I'll have to research that someday and figure that out. Uh, and then, lo and behold, about four years ago, I, got a, I was submitted a pilot for a TV series, and it was set in a boarding school. And I liked the pilot, and I thought, oh, hmm, hmm. So I called up David Hemmingson and said, I've just read this pilot you've written. I don't want to do it, but would you consider writing something for me, if I gave you the idea, set in that same world? And we talked and decided to do it, and it worked out. But, uh, but, talk, but to your question, uh, it was really maybe the first experience I had had of directing a writer. So even though I wasn't you know, writing it for, you know, I did rewriting and you know, put him through hell and everything, but uh, um, I learned about directing writers. Well, I think you did a fantastic job. Thanks. Uh, so not only did uh, Sideways win the Academy Award for Best Adapted Screenplay, it was nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, and of course that was your film where you worked with, uh, and the role that everybody is, I think, uh, uh, talking about um, here at this festival is with Pa Giamatti. Can you talk about how you came to work again together, and is there a special sauce to your collaboration? <laughs> uh, well, you can imagine, since we work together on Sideways, that we've wanted to work together again. It's as simple as, and boring as that. And we both lament that it's taken 20 years. Uh, I'm kind of slow with my films. I, I wish I were doing it all the time, but I get slowed down in screenplay. I'm not fast at the screenplay. Um, so, I don't know, I've made four movies between then and now, something like that, uh, but always wanting to work with him again. And finally, 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 and thanks to the help of David Hemmingson getting the script ready, I was able to come to Paul with this. And boy, we were happy doing it. Did you have Paul in mind as you were developing the script? 100%, 100%. Fantastic. Um, and a lovely surprise also in the film, uh, Divine, uh, who is such a wonderful counterpoint um, and uh, an unexpected uh, uh, um, person who's, who showed up in the film and just, uh, just a wonderful, wonderful performance. How did that casting come about? I, as always, I just auditioned a bunch of people. I, I rely very, very, very much on auditions because uh, I don't. Wa I, I mostly watch old movies. I don't watch a lot of new movies, and I don't watch many series. So I really rely on the casting process to know 
who's out there. But her I had seen in Dolomite Is My Name, which is a very fine motion picture, by the way. Yes. Super funny, and she holds her own against uh, Eddie Murphy in that movie. She's his sidekick in that, and like, wows one. And so I was, I asked for her by name. I said, you know, yeah, we're, gonna, we're auditioning all these gals. Can we try to get her in too? And we, we had a lovely long discussion about uh, the screenplay. And oh, like Paul Giamatti, she's an MFA in theater from Yale. They have that in common. And then I did ask her still to read, and she was kind enough to do that. And there we are. And uh, uh, a discovery for us, Dominic Sessa, uh, who also is just fantastic, uh, as someone that uh, we were not aware of at all when we saw the film. But he was. Yes, can you talk to us a little bit about how he was discovered and how he ended up in the film? The casting director and I knew that he was gonna be, well, didn't know, feared that he would be tough to find. You gotta find someone who's got chops but doesn't feel like an actor. And that's the trouble with, I had that, I ran into that 20, 25 years ago with the election. How do you get actors who can do it but don't feel like actors? They still feel like kids. It just takes time, it just takes time. And uh, nowadays with uh, you know, auditions, you don't really bring in, especially auditions anyway, plus uh, the pandemic, everything's, you watch people's tapes, they send them to you. And it's easy, and uh, we got about 800 submissions from the English-speaking world uh, for that part, now we, and we didn't find him. Didn't, I, I, I didn't watch all 800, I saw maybe you know, 60 or 80 or something. Um, and then the casting director and I said, well, let's do what we had thought we would do at some point, call up the schools where we're actually gonna be shooting and call the drama departments and see who's rattling around there, and there he was. At, at Deer, so the fictitious school is uh, comprised of five different boarding schools in, uh, in Massachusetts, and one of them is Deerfield, and he was a senior at Deerfield. Never been in front of a camera, uh, a star and a ham in the drama club. Like, oh yeah, Dominic, oh yeah, he's going places, that kind of stuff. But he'd never been in front of a camera. Still had to audition him a few times, you know, when you've got non, people without m much uh, film chops, you've got to audition them a few times just to see how bulletproof they are. And he kept jumping through over all the hurdles, and then I had him read with Paul Giamatti, and Paul was blown away. It's like, all right, let's go. Well, a wonderful, wonderful cast, wonderful cast. I just want to ask you, uh, can you speak a little bit about what was, what was this production and perhaps maybe some of the memorable scenes or experiences directing this film? I got to tell you, I'm always nonplussed when I say, what was a major hard scene or what was a challenge? Or like, I, I don't, I'm not very good at remembering. <laughs> it's all kind of a blur. Uh, oh, the liquor store. <laughs> well, you know, let me just fold in these two questions and not answer. But like, for example, this kid, Dominic, the, the, the way I like to make movies, he and Paul already can do it, but this kid could too, which is just memorize large, you know, many pages of dialogue and then do it because I don't like to cut if I don't have to. So I was so happy with this, with Dominic, to be able to have, uh, to do, you know, the liquor store scene is three or four pages in one take, basically, just choreograph it. And then similarly, the, the scene in, on the Boston street afterwards, you know, um, where they're walking down the street, one take. And there are a few examples like that, and that was just, so, not a challenge, but, but something that was delightful to be able to do with this uh, discovery. Okay. That's wonderful. I think we do have a little bit of time to take sure. some questions. I'm available. Okay. <laughs> I'll take the one right in the front here, yes. Thank you. Your movies have such humor, a sadness, but heart. How did you get here? How did I get here? Yeah. Your, your film, yes. Your films have hard humor. And sadness. Sadness. Profound. 
Well, your question is a compliment, so thank you for that. I mean, really, thank you. Probably through comedy. I think, not to compare myself to those great directors, but I think it's comedy directors who are most adept at pathos and having uh, emotion without sentimentality. And I'm thinking of uh, Frank Capra, George Stevens, Leo McCary, and the great is Chaplin. You know, Chaplin comes at it through comedy. But then once you start to add, and, and a forebear of all of those, I think, is Chekhov. And Chekhov, not, not his plays so much, but his short stories, he started with caricature, you know, co provincial comic sketches. And then, then little by little kept writing and adding depth and depth and length and observation. You know, he's a physician as well. So uh, again, not to compare myself, but I find inspiration in those guys. And by the way, can I recommend a movie? Yes. If you've never seen a Leo McCary movie from 1937, please treat yourselves to Make Way for Tomorrow. Woo! Make Way for Tomorrow. Make Way for Tomorrow. It's not so funny. It's the most desperately sad movie you'll ever see in your life. <laughs> but made by a comedy director, and it's, uh, it's profound emotion at the end of the movie is earned. And it's a very, very beautiful film. So I just, if I can leave you with one thing today, please see Make Way for Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So lovely recommendation. I'll take another question. <clears throat> yes, right here. Oh, uh, one other director oh. who did it well was Ozu, the great Japanese director. He started in comedy a lot, and then his film certainly made you cry. Oh. Thank you for that. Yes, you can ask your question. And the question was the uh, editing and shots had a soft dreamlike approach and asking questions around your approach to that. Well, even though you don't know the uh, names of the techniques, my friend, you're a very sensitive film viewer, I must say. And uh, th so the technique is called dissolve. You know, it's been around for a million years. It even predates cinema. It was in the technique of magic lanterns. You know, where you, you, one image goes away while the other image comes up. And I've been, about dissolves, I've been asked, I'm starting to be asked, because I'm just now beginning to show the film, and just starting to do interviews about it. Uh, why did you use so many dissolves? And I, I've said, I don't think that's the right question. I think the right question is, why have dissolves left filmmaking? Because I just, they were always a part of filmmaking, and I just think they're so beautiful in my editor. And all my pictures, going back to Citizen Ruth, uh, have had dissolves, because they're just so pretty. But uh, I really want to thank you for uh, using the word memory, because uh, in as much as I was just kind of in one hand pulling off a parlor trick of trying to make a movie that, set in 1970 that looks like it was made, looks and sounds as though it had been made in 1970, I also thought that the tech, this technique uh, would lend the film not just mel you know, let, let's use three words melancholy nostalgia and memory and it's hard to say m more than that but I just appreciate your using the word memory um, I will take a question right here yes Great film. Loved it. thank you The question is, uh, why is it set in the 1970s, and if the original project was also set in that year? 
No, the pilot that David Hemmingson wrote that I read and rejected was, <laughs> was contemporary and also in a co-ed boarding school. So I knew I wanted to be an all-boys boarding school. Excuse me. Uh, so it kind of had to be a period film just to make that work because all, all those old, most of those old single-sex schools are now uh, co-ed. And we just thought it would be, we, we, we thought, well, not the 1950s. Uh, what's that? What's the Peter Weir one? Uh, Dead Poet Society. Dead Poet Society had been 1958 or something. And I guess, in a way, I've been trying to make 70s movies my whole career. <laughs> and this one just take it, took it one step further. Well, as long as I'm still trying to make 70s movie, let me make a 70s movie and pretend then, so that's sort of like for the theme and feeling of the story. And also, we liked that there would be, not that we, we were interested in making strongly political films, but we still want our film to have a political consciousness and be aware, so there was a lot of heavy crap going on then that maybe could speak to us today. Um, yeah, yeah. And then while we were making the film, and by we I mean the cinematographer, costume designer, and particularly production designer and I, didn't keep telling ourselves, we're making a period movie. We were telling ourselves, we're making a contemporary movie in 1970. Yes, I'm sorry, I will have to wrap up now, but a big round of applause. For Thanks Alexander so Payne, The Holdovers, so and this film is eligible for the People's Choice Award. Please vote for your favorite film, TIFF.net. Thank you.